Hi kids. Okay, next up is Carrie. Uh, released in November 3rd, 1976. Directed by Brian De Palma. Screenplay by Lawrence Cohen. Based on the novel by Stephen King. Uh, this video is going to be longer than normal because I'm going to get into some stuff. Might go on a little bit of a rant. But let's get into it. So, at the time of writing Carrie, Stephen King was an English teacher. Another English teacher, or a teacher, look at that. Uh, living in a trailer with his wife, two kids, uh, had to work a job at an industrial uh, laundry place just to make ends meet. Someone suggests he should write a story from a female point of view or with a female protagonist, so he starts to do that. Uh, he had written short stories that were published in various publications, uh, but uh, still young, fairly inexperienced writer, doesn't have a lot of confidence in himself writing a female protagonist, or feel like he knows how, or that he should. I'm sure there's a lot of writers that feel that way when they're writing a character that is unlike themselves. So, he abandons it. Throws it in the trash. Wife finds it. Tells him he should finish it. Does, decides to finish it, if nothing else, just to please the wife. He's writing it. Uh, the short story eventually gets a little bit longer. Becomes a novella. Gets more confidence in what he's writing. Uh, pads it out a bit. We've got a novel. Gets published. And then um, Brian De Palma's friend reads it likes it, recommends it to Brian. He reads it, likes it, is interested in adapting it. So he goes about finding out what studio owns the rights. Surprise to learn, nobody owns the rights. So they go about getting the rights. I think they only paid $2,500 for it, which is from Stephen King. Um, it's his first one though, right? First novel published. First film, novel made into a film. Uh, United, Ar Ar United Artists funding it. Um, so pre-production starts. Um, during pre-production, um, casting sessions, De Palma holds with his friend who's also making a movie. Now, De Palma has an interesting list of friends at this time, uh, most of whom are or all of whom are also uh, film directors um, just starting out, some of whom went to UCLA Film School, and those friends are Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas. So George Lucas is also casting for Star Wars. So the two of them collaborate old casting, casting sessions together, uh, go over tapes together, notes, recommend different actors for each other. There's uh, stories, rumors out there that, you know, this actor from Star Wars almost got this part in Carrie, and this actor in Carrie almost got this part in Star Wars, which is mostly inaccurate. Um, based on one easily identifiable reason. And that is, Carrie is pretty much an all-female cast. I think there's two male characters in Carrie. And Star Wars is pretty much an all-male cast, right? We've got Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, and that's about it. So any ideas that uh, there was any crossover or people almost getting each other role each the roles is mostly false. Um, there's a rumor that Carrie Fisher almost got the part of Carrie, um, which she said is not true. Um, rumor apparently states that it was because she was unwilling to do nudity, which Carrie Fisher will tell you is very untrue. Anyway production of the movie starts and another one of 
De Palma's friends decides to stop by the set and he's chatting with and flirting with and hitting on all the girls. That friend is Steven Spielberg. Eventually, uh, one of the cast relents. They go on a date, and that is Amy Irving. She plays Sue Snell. Uh, the two of them eventually get married. Not to be outdone, Brian De Palma ends up dating and marrying Nancy Ellen. Uh, Nancy Ellen plays Chris. Uh, Nancy Ellen go on to be in a bunch of De Palma films. Uh, she's in another De Palma film with John Travolta. Um, pretty good film called Blowout. Anyways, the carry of it all. That's what we're talking about. So, film gets made, comes out, it has about a $1.8 million budget, makes somewhere between, depending on which estimates you look at, 28 to $33 million. Not too shabby. Uh, gets nominated for two Academy Awards, Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress, Sissy Spacek, Piper Lorre. Sissy Spacek, um, obviously, gets cast as the lead, but um, De Palma must not have been a Terrence Malick fan, because he was unaware that Sissy was an act actress. Um, Sissy is the star of Terrence Malick's film Badlands, um, but he was on the impression that she was just a set dresser, uh, mostly because on his previous film, Phantom of the Paradise, which is a film that I talked about in a little bit in my previous video for Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, that was her role. She was the set dresser on the Phantom of the Paradise, so he didn't know she was an actress. Anyways, she gets cast, nominated for Academy Award, which uh, some people will say never happens and in the big picture Yeah Mostly never happens right or or genre in general doesn't usually get Nominated at the Academy Awards except in the 70s um, Between 1973 and 1976 uh, Horror movies received 14 Oscar nominations which again, might not seem like a lot, but if you compare that to the 90s, all of the 90s, horror films received nine, and the 60s, seven. So in three years, uh, horror films got double the amount of nominations that an entire 60s got. Not too shabby. Okay. Um, film comes out, success right got the nominations reviews are pretty good now there's something I want to address there is a certain horror host will tell you that uh, film comes out and all of a sudden critics love Brian De Palma and he's a genius and he's a master and he gets all the credit, and Stephen King gets none of it. Um, they will inflict, or not inflict, they will bring up the name of Pauline Kael and her review of Carrie, and say that she wrote 19,000 words of the movie, and she didn't even mention Stephen King. And all of a sudden she's a fan of De Palma when she wasn't before. And it's untrue, actually. Uh, they'll say, the mama had 10 films that came out before this and nobody cared about them. I just want to break that down just because I want to. So, uh, De Palma had been making films for a while, about 13 years. Um, but 10 films that nobody cared about, especially critics, and all of a sudden they're praising him, is inaccurate. So, uh, De Palma had made some instructional videos um, for the NAACP, the Treasury Department, IBM, so little shorts for them. 
I don't think critics really review those or audiences in general see those. He had made a few documentary shorts. Um, again, not really released very wide. Uh, he had made about three or four of those and three or four feature length films, mostly in black and white, budgets between thirty and fifty thousand um, dollars. Not released by major studios, not really seen a lot, right? Like, uh, it's I tried to find information on uh, what kind type of release they had, and they were so small you can't even find that information, right? So, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show was released initially only came out in eight screens, so I don't know what kind of release these came out in. Uh, by the way, most of those films, black and white. Um, Robert De Niro is the star, right? And then uh, the mama's friend, Scorsese, sees him and starts making a bunch of movies with him. So this is, as far as what critics and audience would see, this is De Palma's third movie. So the suggestion that all of a sudden critics are praising him is, is kind of inaccurate. Um, and saying that Pauline Kael all of a sudden is appraising him is inaccurate because the first of those three that I mentioned, uh, Phantom of the Paradise and the one prior to that, uh, Pauline Kael was a fan of. Um, she was, and pretty much always was, a fan and a champion of De Palma. In fact, in the next movie I'm going to do, uh, she compares that director unfavorably to De Palma. Is. She's, he's nowhere near as good as De Palma when it comes to directing a horror movie. So I'm not quite sure why someone would fabricate that because you can go and you can read Pauline Kael's review of Carrie and um, the notion that she doesn't even mention Stephen King is false because you can read it and there his name is in the second paragraph. Just a little vent I had to get off my chest, um, right? This person also says that feminists hated the movie when it came out. That one of them called it, a reviewer, a critic called it, uh, the greatest put down to women in all of movies. I couldn't find any evidence of that. Um, if you Google, sure, you'll find some people arguing that, uh, from a feminist point of view, that the movie is bad. I, but you'll also find a lot saying the opposite. To say feminists hate it implies that the majority of feminists didn't like this, or um, like a movie like I Spit on Your Grave, feminists were out picketing, picketing the premiere, that didn't happen. In fact, you could easily make an argument that feminists love Carrie. I mean, it's a female story with all female casts. That doesn't happen a lot, especially in 1976. Um, so why would someone say that? Why would someone say feminists hate this movie? Why would someone use a female critic and say how much she hated it and make a point of making up things that are incorrect. Sexism? That's the only reason I could think of that a fe former critic would say bad things about a female critic. I'm not articulating this the way I want to. Just saying. Uh, horror hosts who make up things for their own reasons, their own weird point of view, even if it's disguised as satire, it's not funny, um, right? If your idea of how good the movie is is based on how many tits are in it, I don't know, are you 12? Or deserves a little better than that. So that's my rant. Won't mention John Bloom put that aside. Initially, 
wasn't going to talk about Carrie, um, but you have to do a Stephen King, and I'm going to do another one. That was the one that I was initially going to do, but I think this one makes a good counterpoint to that one when I do it. And um, what ultimately made me decide to talk about Carrie is the ending. So I won't describe the ending. If you've seen the movie, you know the ending. These uh, videos are about films that are important to film history. And I think the ending of Carrie is very influential to the horror movies that come after it. That uh, jump scare, the sort of uh, epilogue, um, ending button on it that um, films like Nightmare on Elm Street sort of replicate. Um, and a lot of other horror films, uh, Friday the 13th, they all sort of have uh, this technique that Carrie ends with. So that's why I decided to talk about Carrie. That's why Carrie's important, right? Uh, we're not just going through good horror films. It's horror films that influence the next ones. So that's it for Carrie. Um, the next one I'm going to do, uh, it's uh, The Night He Came Home. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, thumb, bell. See you then.